are now listening to the Serious Growth Podcast with your host, Leo Costa Jr. Honestly, you know, I've been working on this film and so I'm driving every day to, you know, Glendale or Burbank. And yeah. It's been so fascinating because, you know, during the pandemic, traffic was oh, God. gone. You yeah. could get anywhere so fast and I got so used to it I know. that it's like a really huge wake up call yeah. as, you know. But yeah, there's some days where if I have an early call time before traffic hits, I'll get you know, across town in 30 minutes. And then if it's in the afternoon, it takes that same location takes an hour and a half. I know it's crazy. Yeah. Things aren't really that far away when there's no traffic. No, (laughs) I know I got kind of used to that. Actually, that's kind of one of the downsides of now things opening back up because I really enjoyed getting back and forth. And like you said, getting to places that normally take an hour, hour and a half and 30 minutes. My goodness. I know, you know, know. it's crazy stuff. Uh, Listen, uh, welcome to serious growth podcast uh, you. you may or may not be wondering what the hell you're doing on a podcast called serious growth but um i here's here's my take on that uh as a bodybuilder because serious growth, growth relates to uh bodybuilding uh training courses that we have, have written yep. over the years right and as a bodybuilder what we have is a uh, discipline we have a, mm-hmm. a a stated objective and what I've learned over the years, it doesn't really matter what line of work that you're in. There mm-hmm. are some characteristics that are the same. And yeah. that's the reason why someone like you is on a podcast that's called Serious Growth, because, you know, there's a certain mindset that you have. Obviously, I've looked at your oh. bio. There's Oh, heck yeah. No, I'm all, even the name. I was like, I was all about it. Serious <laughs> Growth to me, you know, I feel like that's anybody that's on a growth path, you know, there whether you that's, go. you know, for bodybuilding, whether that's for whatever path in life you want to make. But if you don't have an element of like the mindset, the growth mindset, like that's right, you get it, you know? So I just want to sort of address that, uh, you know, because there's so many, like I call it the serious growth creed, you know, student of the game, warrior mindset. They're just repetition is the mother of skill. I mean, this stuff applies, you know? Yeah. And uh, I see here where you're an athlete, you're an actress, Mm -hmm. you have a degree in psychology, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, humanitarian. I mean, my goodness. You have mm. a, a really a big stretch there of things that you do. Uh, I'm yeah. curious to know, uh, where did it all start for you? I mean, how did you and wh- where, I mean, wh- were you a dancer and an athlete first? <laughs> uh, no, I actually grew up a really competitive gymnast okay. from a super young age. And yeah, it was from the ages of like, I got in as a little kid and it was just initially this really fun thing that I loved doing. And then it got really competitive really fast. And so I was so young and it got to a place where I was just so unhealthy and unhappy and really stuck in this world in this identity of it's all I knew, you know, it's, I went to practice every day. I was practicing five hours a day, six days a week. Um, you know, my mom was very involved in my gymnastics career. My friends were, it was who I thought I was. And when it got to the point where I was throwing up, once a week because I was so nervous all the time of getting hurt or getting yelled at or not being good enough. Yeah. Um, I lived in so much fear and I really learned the power of my mind in a negative way. Yeah. Um, cause I subconsciously and or consciously made myself sick all the time as a way out because the stress was so much, but I was too scared yeah. to do anything about it. So yeah. I was like, Oh, if I just get sick, I can still be a part of it, but I don't have to like really be there. Yeah. So it's a really unhealthy pattern to learn. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we we all learn these patterns. It's a survival tactic. I was just gonna, um, I was just going to say that, you know, in a way mm-hmm. what your body was really doing was trying to protect you, you know, down deep yes. because it was a negative. I mean, it got to the point where it's toxic, it sounds like. Yeah, it really did. And you know, I was just so scared. I was so scared to let my mom down, to let my friends down. Yeah. Um and to let go of this dream that I had, you know, cause I watched Carrie Strug in the Olympics and I was like, Oh, that's my life. That's what I'm doing. It was all I knew. Yeah. And so finally it kind of resulted in, I, I broke my hands. I have six pins in my hand. So shattered my hand in a competition. Um, and the crazy thing is, is that I was relieved. Right. Uh, and, uh, and that's yeah. when I really knew like, gosh, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. You know, the fact that I'm happy about shattering my hand. Yeah. Um, and that it was a relief really like was a huge wake up call. And so when it came time to really go back to practice again, after the six months of, of, you know, healing from my hand injury, I just, every part of my being just couldn't do it. And 
I mean, I was terrified to tell my mom, to tell my friends, um, and to just to quit, you know, because everyone told me, oh, like quitting is, is for weak right. people or like quitting is like the easy way out. And that was so not who I was. I was like, yeah. no, I'm tough. I get through stuff. I, you know, and I think my mom was really trying to teach me resilience. Yeah. Um, and she was just trying to be the best mom she knew how to be in that moment. But it was really hard for her and for me when I really told her and, you know, I was 14 years old and my mom was like my world and yeah. my friends were my world. The gymnastics was my world. So when I finally was like, I just can't do this anymore. Uh, my mom basically was like, you know, I don't like you right now. I don't want to talk to you for a while. Well, yeah. And that was just really hard to hear. Um, cause she was my everything yeah. and my friends didn't want to talk to me. I didn't know who I was anymore. I didn't have a purpose or a passion. I literally was just like, I felt like, why am I here? Yeah. And I went through just, I was just, you know, cried in my room by myself a lot and just really depressed and sad and alone and confused. And, um, and then I saw this movie, it was a film called center stage and it was the first dance film I had ever seen. And I just sat in the theater and just cried and prayed. and was like, that's what I want to do with my life. I want to perform. I want to tell stories like that movie because it just changed me. Like yeah. in the theater, as a little girl went from feeling so alone and afraid and, and purposeless yeah. <laughs> to feeling so lit up with this goal and dream. And I mean, I sat in that dark theater by myself and just started visualizing me doing that. And I didn't even want to leave. People had to like pull me out of the theater because I was yeah. just so in that experience. It was such a visceral experience. And I remember right after that, I was like, get me to acting classes, get me to dance classes. And as soon as I started acting and dancing, I just really finally felt what it feel like to not live in so much fear yeah. all the time. And I just loved it. Like you couldn't get me to stop, <laughs> you know, yeah. like I was, I wasn't sick anymore. I wasn't throwing up anymore. I never wanted, I always wanted to be a practice and I always wanted to stay longer and work harder. And I think that's a true testament of, I feel like we're all, we all have different things that like light or light us up. Yeah. And I think sometimes we get so trapped in these identities that maybe aren't really meant for us. <laughs> and yeah. when we, when we have the courage to quit the thing and seek out other options or other things that do light us up, all of a sudden we experience life on a whole other level. That's true. And really long story short, I just, I wasn't that good. You know, I really wasn't a very good dancer. Um, and I just really started acting. So how could I be that great at it? But I, I just worked my ass off like every day. Couldn't get me to leave. I even got like the rap award at my studio because I would be the girl that after five hours of practice would stay in a dark room by myself and just practice. Yeah. And they had to kick me out. <laughs> um, ultimately that ended up, uh, I created vision boards of center stage. I wrote goal lists every day of like, I'm going to be in a movie like center stage. I want to act. I want to inspire people like that movie did for me. Really long story short. Um, about six years after I saw that movie when I was 14, I ended up playing the lead in the sequel to that same film. And that film was center stage, turn it up. And I played Kate Parker in that movie. And that was my first film. Perfect. That was my first acting job was literally the lead in the sequel to the film that changed my life as a little girl. Yeah. And if that's not a story of our ability to create really incredible things. Yeah. You attracted lives, that to some degree. You That came to you through your, you know, what you were doing. But I must say this. And maybe you'll agree with me or not, but I think that the fact that you're, you know, it's kind of like a, it's a sort of a mixed message in a way, but that in your uh, gymnast time, when you mm -hmm. had all this fear and all that, that a part of what you did as a gymnast was what you actually needed when you went to your dancing in this mm -hmm. in this movie if you you if you didn't have that in your background i'm not saying that this might not have happened but i think those tools and those lessons that you learn as a gymnast even though some of those became very toxic and you know mm -hmm. anthony uh cool. tony robbins you know who he is anthony robbins oh he's had a massive impact on my life yeah yes. me too you know and you probably remember when he said you know most of us really act when there's a lot of pain or a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of pleasure and yep. I think that you were the example of that. When it got to the point where there's so much pain that you had to leave. You had to leave. And mm -hmm. but I and like I said, I think that 
all that that stuff in your background was part of the reason why you have this drive, this massive drive, and in mm-hmm. the way that you're explaining that story, I find that very fascinating. Um, oh, hundred <laughs> percent. You're absolutely right. I mean, I, I literally, I know it's what I wouldn't have been able to do without it. Yeah. And I look back on that story, and as hard as it was. So many of the roles, both center stage, you know, I did another movie, um, played a lead role in a movie called Bring It On. Um, I'm doing a film right now, even that's a superhero role, which is such a dream come true. But all of those things, like I wouldn't be able to do any of it if it wasn't for my background in gymnastics. The resilience, like you said, all of not only like the physicality that I've worked hard to keep (laughs) throughout my life and I trained really hard, but I grew up in this. I learned all those skill sets of resilience, of persistence, of like, you just show up, you, you know, sometimes you have to push through the pain. Um, and other actresses just don't necessarily have that same mindset. And it's, it it really has. So I am, I'm forever grateful for it, but I really believe that we oftentimes, like you said, we learn, we learn the greatest lessons through our pain and, and, and our, and our challenging times. And I think one of my biggest missions is to help disrupt the perception of pain because a lot of times I think it gets a really bad stereotype, like, oh, if I'm hurting or if I'm going through a challenge or if something feels painful emotionally or and or physically, I think that's when we just have to look for the lessons and yeah. learn the lessons as fast as we can so that we can move through that pain and learn the lessons and, and grow and adapt. It's just like in, in physical exercise, like yeah. you don't build a bicep muscle, like it breaks down, there's pain before the growth, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And and so I think I, I really love linking everything that we understand about how to work out physically into the same capacity of how to be strong mentally, be strong emotionally, um, and, you know, be strong spiritually. And, and, you know, something, here's the thing you're, you're, as you go, cause I'm, you're, you're, I'm speaking to you now because like I'm way older than you and there's something to be said for experience, firsthand experience. And, you know, it's scary going through life to some degree because of the changes that you will, have to deal with and you already have you know obviously what you've learned and what other people should take from this is that there's a silver lining and and your torture in a way of being scared as a gymnast mm-hmm. there's a silver lining there that got you to where you're at right now but i think at some point you're going to have to change some more and you might have this <laughs> feeling again but you have to be able to remember okay i know i've been through this i know what this feels like yeah. And, and you're not going to be so, I think, blown away by it. Maybe it's like anything else. The first time something happens to you that you've never experienced, you don't know, you know how to handle that. I mean, it's a process yeah. that you're going through. And I yeah. think I think to some degree, that's what you're saying is that mm-hmm. you've learned from that. You know, in bodybuilding, in fact, in, my, in one of my, in the gym that I have, personal training studio that I still have, I have decals all over the place. And on one wall, it says, uh, results are a reflection of the struggle. And that's exactly what you're saying. This is how this stuff uh, correlates back and forth, you know, in your industry yes. as as well as mine, you know. Um, yeah. No, I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. And I feel like once we understand something, I think one of my favorite sayings is to seek to understand. Yeah. And it's really one of our, our tagline at a brand that my my partner and love created called Relationship Renegades is to seek to understand to seek to understand our pain, to seek to understand our challenges and to seek to understand everything that we go through to learn the lessons, to learn them faster. So we don't keep repeating old patterns, old habits, and I can learn from them in the best way to move forward. And so that everything just feels like I can find peace throughout it all. Because even though, I mean, I might be going through a ridiculously hard challenge. I still feel like there's a peace that you can find within that struggle and I feel like that's when life just gets a lot more beautiful. You know, I got to the point with my training where most of the time when I was working out as a bodybuilder, because that's highly competitive, just like what you're yes. in. And yeah. I, I, I'll be honest with you. Most of the workouts, I absolutely hated, but I mm. loved them, but I hated them. And but here's what I learned is that and that's the reason why that decal is so important. The, the struggle, the reflection is in the struggle, because Mm-hmm. I knew that I made my best gains when I was struggling. It got to the point, and this is what you're talking about, about looking at things in a different in a different light. When I started struggling after being involved in this for a number of years, I thought, this is fantastic. I'm struggling. 
this is when I'm going to make my best gains. You see, yes. that's what you're basically saying. Looking at mm -hmm. that that failure or or pain, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. in a yep. different way, and and make it uh, to your advantage. Yeah, it's actually really interesting. So, you know, there's been times, you know, I'm so grateful for every role that I've gotten to play as an actress, but I've also gotten like thousands of no's. I've worked my ass off for months and months and months on characters and gotten so close to life-changing roles and then not gotten the part and yeah. been devastated. And especially because your mind starts to fantasize, you know, sometimes it's like a month, like three month process of auditioning and working hard on something. And then you're getting so close and it's down to you and, maybe two other people yeah. and your mind starts fantasizing about how your life's going to change and yeah. how this world's going to be so amazing and all the things are going to happen. And then it doesn't happen. Ooh. And it's really hard. Ouch. That's, <laughs> it's really, that's a really knife, hard. a and knife in the belly. Actually, <laughs> yeah. In one of the films that I actually did in center stage, the first one, there's a scene when my co-star says, I'm talking about, you know, just getting rejected. I can't handle the, my character couldn't handle the rejection after rejection, after rejection. And my co-star basically says, he's like, well, that's what this is. Like, you're going to have to figure out a, a better way to handle it because that's what this is. And I've often been asked that. They're like, how do you handle all of the quote unquote rejection? And I always just say, well, I don't, if I perceived it as rejection, I, I wouldn't be able to continue on, but I don't perceive it that way. I literally, every audition that I have is just another opportunity for me to get a little bit better at my craft, at the thing that I love. Yeah. That I don't have to do this, that I get to be here. I get to audition. I get to go to the gym. I get to do a workout. And what a gift that is. And really just getting in this state of immense gratitude. Like if if you can see, if you can taste or touch or smell or lift a weight or dance or play or do anything. Like it's such a gift. Yeah. Because there's somebody else that can't do that. There's somebody else that's in a hospital bed that is praying and wishing and hoping that they could be able to do something like that again. That's true. And so I think just always, I, I feel like I, I love gratitude is alchemy. You know, it just turns things that you don't have into something that you do have. Yeah. And it's just, it's been a beautiful, <laughs> um, very powerful thing uh, throughout my life. You know, uh, what a lot of people don't realize is what you just basically said, you know, looking at you and, and seeing your bio and where your life has gone and been, they, the perception for so many people, the average person, I would say, is that, oh, my God, her life is just so easy. And she just, you know, from here to there, you know, yeah. and what they don't realize is what you said. How many times have you been said no to, you mm -hmm. know, and that's the reason why. And it's just like in my sport. Look, most people yeah. that get into bodybuilding, even just to get in, in very fit shape, most people fail. Most of them mm -hmm. do because they yeah. can't tolerate the time and reps that you put in when everybody else is resting you know yes. and all that pain that you go through when you're getting rejected most people don't get that they just see this you know this person that has immense success but they don't see the other stuff that mm -hmm. they had to tolerate to get to where you're at and to where you're going yeah you know? well and that's what I, I often just constantly have to fill my mind with or choose to fill my mind with stories of other people and how they did it yeah you know understanding and learning that you know, some of my heroes like Morgan Freeman didn't have his big break till he was 52. Yeah. You know, and, and he got no after no after no after no. Nobody really knew who he was. He's, you know, auditioning after auditioning after auditioning. Imagine if he would have stopped at at 48. Exactly. You know, we would never know who Morgan Freeman is. The same thing with Meryl Streep. She got told she was too ugly to be an actress. Yeah. You know, and so the more that I continually listen to those stories, it it just continually reminds me, like, if they can do it, I can do it. You yeah. know, and and it's also, it's a really fun game. It's a little annoying sometimes, but <laughs> uh, my fiance and I, we have a practice of like really getting to the point where you almost get excited when you get a no. Yeah. Yes, you allow yourself to feel the pain, like be human, like <laughs> scream, cry, punch a bag, whatever you got to do, like feel your emotions is important. But then be able to be like, gosh, I'm, I'm so excited because I know that this no is for a reason. And there's something a greater opportunity that's more meant for me somewhere else. And the fact that I got a no meant that somebody else got a yes and feeling so even excited about the fact that maybe that was just really meant for them and living in an abundance mindset of there is space and a place for everybody to win. And it's not all about me, you yeah. know, and if somebody else was better for that role, 
then they're better for that role. They worked harder. They, they had their, their story. Their whole life's mission was about that. And I'm just going to keep going and keep learning and keep growing and keep getting lost in the journey. Cause ultimately movies come and go, money comes and goes, things come and go, but it's like who you become, your relationship with yourself, how you feel about you yeah. is the only thing you really get to keep. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break so I can tell you about our product. Do you want a bone crushing grip? Good, because you're gonna get one with the amazing new TRS Gripper. It's a progressive grip builder with longer handles and a special ergonomic design that's like a dozen hand grippers in one. Start off easy and work your way up to quickly build your grip strength from wet noodle to pulverizing. The package includes a video from the world famous strength coach, Dr. Russ Horine, the man who worked with Leo Costa to help bring you Big Beyond Belief in the Bulgarian Power Burst. Dr. Horine shows you a simple and easy to follow workout plan that takes just minutes a day right from in front of your TV set if you want. So click on the link below and let's get started building you a stronger, firmer, bone crushing grip. Yeah, you know, you you have a very uh, evolved way of thinking. Believe me, at uh, especially somebody your age, very evolved way of thinking. Um, you know, and the thing about I, I here's what I think is also very important, and it's just completely oozing out of you, is that mm -hmm. when you have passion for what you're doing, that's a game changer. You know, that's yeah. that that passion because you're going to be tested in life, no matter mm -hmm. what. You'll be tested as an as an actor or an actress. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but that passion is the reason why you keep coming back. The true yep. passion, not the fly by night passion, fake passion. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, I absolutely <laughs> do. And I, people have asked me before, you know, I did two big films when I was a lot younger and they're like, how come you didn't blow up after center stage and bring it on these big studio films. And I just say I'm, I'm, and I used to, really be frustrated by that. And now I'm just like, I thank God every single day. Cause I really feel like I was being protected because yeah. I wasn't ready yeah. and I needed to go through some serious pain and struggle and heartbreak and things that really just grounded me and also made me appreciate it so much. And also really see if I really loved it that much That's, that yeah. no matter if I got the role or if I didn't, I still wanted to do it. Cause just like in gymnastics, I think sometimes we get stuck in things that don't light us up anymore. Yeah. And that's why I'm always focused on like continue to, to find things and do things that light you up because what, what lit you up 10 years ago might not be lighting you up anymore. And maybe there's something else that you're supposed to be doing that your soul is dying to do. Yeah. But and if you stay so focused on like, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this. And you're miserable. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's really something that has to, right. you know, that, that can shift and adapt. Yeah. Um, so to just to be, to always be open to, yeah. to more, to following, you know, what really lights you up. Being open is the key there to keep learning and to keep wanting to learn. You know, we learned in our business, you know, when we started writing uh, training courses, we started in the late eighties. My, my business partner and myself at the time, we made a promise to ourselves. We said, we only want to do things that we have passion for nothing else we're going to do. And, and that's what we'd live by. And that's what you're talking about right there. And yes. you're right. Things change and they, if they don't change, I mean, I guess it's okay. But in my mind, if it, if you don't change, you're not really growing. I don't think mm -hmm. in my opinion, yeah, you know, no, I agree. And uh, I think that, you know, obviously you're following down that very same path that we did, you know, again, that's what yes. gets that, that, Ooh, that buzz is amazing. It, it's, it has powers that no one can really understand as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I think I posted the other day <laughs> that like passion doing things that light you up is like the best energy drink ever. Yeah. You know, cause there's been times when like, I'm not doing what I'm passionate about. I'm not following, you know, maybe I've gotten like stuck on autopilot, just kind of falling into like busy stuff. And I just feel like so lethargic or like, don't really want to get out of bed. But then when you start doing something that you love or you challenge yourself, or you have to like go do the brave thing or do something that scares you, you get adrenaline from oh, that and yeah. you get energy, you get passion. And so, Hard to sleep. yeah, I, I feel like, man, so, I mean, so there, that's a, that's a complex topic. It really powerful. is. It really is. I mean, even like there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, you know, there's a double-edged sword uh, to some degree, like in my sport, because this passion, you start like, if you're not paying attention to what your body's telling you and your mind, <laughs> 
your yes. your mind says, okay, I know I'm hurt, but I'm just going to keep training anyway. You know, yeah. you can you can actually hurt yourself really bad. So it's, that's yes. another animal to learn how to control that side of you. That that yeah. you know that side that's so energetic, that's so passionate that maybe you lose sight of what's really in front of you sometimes. I think that happens, yeah. don't you? No, I, I couldn't agree more. And actually, I've been listening to Bruce Lee's book. Uh, he's a big hero of mine. Yeah. And he talks so much about the understanding of the yin and yang energy. Yeah. That everything in nature and in life has this yin and yang. This like yang being very like excited, forceful, powerful energy. Um, and the yin being this very like regenerative like relaxed, calm, peaceful energy. And if yeah. we don't honor both sides of us, then we're asking for, uh, for issues. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah, I think it's really important. I mean, I grew up in the athlete mindset. You push through the pain, you do it anyway. You know, if, if you don't do it, then you're weak. And right. I've had, it's been a life practice of mine to actually learn how to honor my body and my more yin energy. It's hard. It's it really hard. challenging for me because I want to be like all in all the time, yep. but you know, I mean, especially when we're talking about like physicality and like the shape, you know, getting your best shape. I was, I was at one point in my life when I was working so hard. It was like eight hours a day of both like dancing and working out and training all day long, every day. Yeah. And at one point my body just like almost hit a wall. Like I just couldn't, I was like holding on to more weight, even though I was working out so hard, felt like I was eating super clean. And then I finally went to a doctor and got some tests done. And he was like, Rach, you, your cortisol levels are through the roof. Like yeah. you have to stop doing cardio. And I was like, whoa, 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 what? <laughs> stop doing you want cardio? Me to stop doing cardio? <laughs> and I was like, no, I can't do that. Like it was a, it was, I had to really work through some stuff, but I, again, had so much pain around not feeling good that I was like, okay, I'll, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to do whatever it takes. And I'm not kidding you. When I stopped doing cardio, my body dropped weight so fast oh, I and I started feeling better so fast. Yeah. And when my, you know, obviously this, my story is not everybody's story, but it's just the understanding of learning how to honor that your body needs rest and recovery just as much as it needs to train. It, de it depends on that. In fact, what you're uh, talking, it's classic uh, chronic overtraining and you mm -hmm. probably had adrenal fatigue up the yin yang uh, based yep. on what you're saying, <laughs> because just like you said, the minute you did less, go figure mm -hmm. all of a sudden you started losing weight. What? You know, this is I where know. I know. And this is, it just, it's constantly holding yourself back, putting a bit in your mouth. And that is a really, you got to have a lot of discipline now, but which brings me to this um, a time in your life. When did psychology uh, come into your life? I mean, we're at the place where you're dancing now in your uh, yes. acting life. Now, were yes. you already, did you already have a degree in psychology mm -hmm. or was that something that you sort of brought in to maybe help deal with your things? Yeah. So great question. Um, so right around 14, you know, after I, I shattered my hand, I went through that whole experience. Um, and after I saw center stage right around that same time, I came across this book called as a man thinketh. I didn't even like to read. I was 14 years old. I don't know how I, I was really just in my parents' office and I just came across it and something inside me just wanted to start reading it. And I, it was my first book into the concept of your thoughts matter and they affect the way that you feel and it affects your whole trajectory of life. And I just became obsessed. And I remember being mad. I was like, how come nobody told me this when I was five years old? Because this would have been so helpful, you know, throughout all my gymnastics career and all the things that just would have helped me understand to not believe every stupid thought that I thought and, or that I could choose a different thought and it would create a different feeling and a different emotion and a different response to life. And anyways, ever since that book, since I was 14, I just became obsessed. Everything I could find on, on that same path of psychology, things like Tony Robbins, Wayne Dyer, Louise Hay, um, Byron Katie, like anything I could find. Um, and yeah, I just became obsessed. I mean, so much of all those, what I was learning, I was putting to practice from such a young age. And I know that's also why I've been able to do so many things and, and ultimately, you know, manifested playing the lead role in the sequel to the film that changed my life. That was no accident. Like yeah. I visualized that every day. I had big vision boards. I wrote it down in my journal every day. I was doing things that I was learning, putting them to practice. And I just, everything about human behavior and why we do what we do 
was so powerful to me, uh, not only in my own life, but also as an actress. Yeah. Uh, it's really, it's the study of human behavior. And I, I mean, even to the point where my friends made fun of me because they're like, we just go to this party, you know, in high school or whatever. And I was like, no, I got to go to this self-development conference. Yeah. yeah. You know, the thing about it is what, again, it's you're you're obviously in the minority in the way that you're thinking. And I would say that I am too, because uh, it's very foreign to, to a lot of people when you tell them that you're visualizing anything. I have yeah. a client of mine that I've been... Uh, She's been, she tra has trained with me for years in my studio. She's not that, I, I tell her, I said, before I ever play a game like in football when I was playing or in training, I visualize everything that I'm going to do before I ever do it. And I yes. do it over and over again. And it's, they, she looks at me like, what the hell are you saying? I mean, it's, it's strange for me that not yeah. everybody would think that way. But they don't. Yeah. They, they really you know, don't. So I, I, I agree. <laughs> I, I start thinking that everybody does this, you know, and if you look, I mean, there's so much science behind it. Every, you know, especially professional athletes, Olympians, people that are doing incredible things, they have a visualization practice. Yeah. And I'm really obsessed with the power of our imagination, like the power of our minds and a really understanding that every day we're visualizing. Yeah. A lot of times we're just visualizing all the bad things that could happen and maybe why we experience a lot of not so great things. Yeah. Um, and it's just really understanding like, Every day, my, I'm imagining stories all the time. It's just, where am I going to direct my focus? Yeah. And really learning how to, it's a skill. It's a muscle. I really believe that the power of our imagination is, we don't even understand how powerful No, we it don't. And actually, the, your mind is, you know, thoughts are the most powerful thing in the world. But it's, mm -hmm. it's being able to harness that. Most of us don't. It's a small percentage that we use of our brain power. We know that. You know, so to do yeah. that, it's, it's difficult is what it is. Well, and, and more so too, you know, I love... Wayne Dyer has been like one of my absolute favorite, like greatest teachers, I think in my life. If, if people don't know who that is, just go look him up. Yeah. You know, he passed away a little oh, while ago, but just an incredible teacher. I didn't know yeah, that. How, how incredible old was he? teacher. How old was he? Um, gosh, you know, I don't remember exactly how old he was, but cause to me, I listened to him yeah. on a regular basis yeah. still, all his YouTube videos. So he's yeah. still, he's yeah. still here to me. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I just, uh, you know, talk so much about thoughts are really powerful, but almost what is even more is the thought that is attached to the feeling. And so I can think all day, like I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire. I'm, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm, you know, whatever it is yeah. I want to think. But if I have the feeling that like the feeling that's associated with that thought, if that feeling isn't in alignment with a feeling of like, yes, or like a feeling of love or faith or optimism or hope, or joy, then there's conflict. I'm in conflict with myself yeah. and, and that is an issue. And so it's really understanding how to, that yes, our thoughts are really powerful, but understanding that the feeling that goes along with the thought, like, cause we are emotional, energetic beings and that there was a practice I started a while ago, not even really knowing what I was doing, but I would, I call it future gratitude. And so every day or morning or whatever, I would just turn on like a power playlist and just start visualizing everything I wanted to create in my life, but then living as if it already happened yeah. in this state of like gratitude, like extreme gratitude, because that gratitude and that feeling of like, Oh, I already did it. Like it's already happening. I'm expecting it. I'm, and I don't, it doesn't matter which way the road takes me. I know that that's my, that's where I'm at. I, I've already almost experienced yeah. these things in my body and my mind in my head so many times even the film I'm working on right now. I mean, like, it's just, it's so, it's so magical and it's so powerful to have practices like that where you see it and you feel it in your body, in your yeah. mind, in your, in your heart, in your spirit for so long. And you go through the challenges and you go through getting no's and you go through falling on your face. And then one day out of nowhere, you realize that you're literally living the thing that you've been imagining the whole time, having faith that no matter what wall you hit, what like massive challenge you faced, it, it happened. And I really just believe that a lot of times it doesn't happen the way we think it's going to happen. Right. And so it's really being able to let go of timelines and let go of rigidity and let go of it has to happen this way because most of the time it just doesn't. It yeah. probably happens in a completely different way than you thought it was going to happen. But if you stay persistent, if you stay resilient, if you stay open and, and loving and kind and supportive, 
magical things happen. It's true. And I've, I've had the same thing happen to me because you, know, you and I are very much the same that way. And then mm -hmm. I have these moments where I look back and think, crap, man, I, I actually did what I wanted it's to true. do way back when. It just it showed up in a different way. And yes. I, that's really a good point for uh, for other people to know that it does because it, it hap it's happened to you. It's happened mm -hmm. to me. And that's not mm -hmm. that's not just by accident. You know, mm -hmm. that's something that actually does happen. But again, you're pointing yeah. out the real importance there is you just you have to have where you think and feel that it has to be congruent. And you really have to believe mm -hmm. that you are whatever you're thinking, you know, because yeah. you're, you're right. It's, you know, one without the other, you're going to get a much different outcome. Amazing yes. um, to hear you uh, say this now. Uh, so we're well, I have to tell you, by the way, mm -hmm. one of my favorite comedies, Two and a Half Men. I have yes. been I have been watching that damn show. Uh, let me see, at least seven years, eight years. I watch it every day still. I can't. So it cracks me up. And you were in that, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so which I'm sure yeah. that I've seen you because I've watched so each episode fun. like ten times or at least. <laughs> so which one were you in? <laughs> um, I was in uh, the Halloween episode with Ashton Kutcher. Okay. Um, so it was already with when he was in the show. Yeah. Um, I also I also did anger management with uh, Charlie Sheen as oh. well. But yeah, I play um, like this cop character. It's like a Halloween episode. So it was really fun. I'll be looking forward, I, uh, forward to seeing that now in a new, yes. uh, new way. Was it a blast working on, on that production? Oh, it was so fun. That was actually <laughs> my first experience doing, because that's a, a live taping, you know, so yeah. you're taping that in front of an audience yeah. and it um, everything is constantly changing. There's a lot of, you know, you rehearse that whole week um, and, and then you, you know, you get on set and there's a live audience and it was just really fun to see, again, we're talking about, I think there's so, so many life lessons I learned as an actress, but to be willing to adapt, to be willing to be open-minded, to not get stuck in yeah. like thinking that this is the way it has to be done because you could practice and practice and rehearse and rehearse. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you get something that's thrown at you. That's like, oh, we're changing this whole thing. Ready and action. Yeah. You know, like you have yeah. to be so oh, ready. Almost like in, impromptu, right? In yeah. a way. Yeah. But let me ask and you so, something. I, I want you to walk us through that because I, I know that's a live taping. But tell yes. me the back, like behind the scenes stuff. Okay, mm -hmm. look, there's a lot of dialogue, you know, in that half hour yes. or whatever. So are, are there a lot of cut? Stop, gotta do it over again. Is that is there a lot of that going on in a live taping? Walk us through that a little bit. Or is it I mean yeah. it can't be all one take, right? Yeah, no, there's a lot of different takes. Okay. You definitely do like individual <laughs> scenes. They're usually it really depends. Sometimes you have shorter scenes or longer scenes. Yeah. Um but but it's really fun for the audience because they get to see the different takes that happen and the yeah. different options that happen. Because a lot of times a lot of different options or scene options, you know, go into something and then they get to pick which one, whichever one got the most laughs yeah, really yeah. is the one that works, you know, and if something's not working, that's why it's so important to be able to adapt and take direction really well and not be stuck in a certain pattern. Right. Because, you know, you, you could be practicing a whole scene a very certain way and then it doesn't get a laugh. And then the, you know, the writers come over and be like, Oh, here's a new, here's a new script we're going to send to you. And you have like five minutes to <laughs> do it, you know, to learn it and to be ready to go out in front of, all these people and be filmed. I mean, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. I can only imagine. I don't think I could do that. I mean, was it exciting for you? It, it was super exciting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it very different than, I mean, you know, especially for, you know, I, I did a, a guest role on that show. So it was only one episode, but yeah. for, for people who are on live taping shows like that yeah. all the time, it's, it's intense. It's probably more intense than others. Like the film I'm doing now, we don't have a live audience. So yeah. You know, if you mess up, you're not having all these people live watching you. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man, that's crazy stuff. Yeah, when I it, saw that, I just, is. I can't believe this. Uh, so where, where are you at right now with your, I know you're doing a a film right now, but are yes. there other, some other films that you'd like to to mention and how they impacted, yeah. uh, impacted your life? Oh, man, yeah. So the one I'm doing right now is called Legend of the White Dragon, and it's a new superhero movie. Um, and I play the main like hero girl in it, which again was like such a childhood dream come true. And it's so interesting, the pattern in my life, you know, the films that I obsessed over as a kid now really getting to play the leads in follow up um, shows to them, yeah. like center stage, same thing with bring it on. I obsessed, I, you know, group doing dance and cheerleading. So I obsessed over bring it on. 
as a kid. And so to get to play a main role in one of the follow-ups to that was incredible. And now I also obsessed over Power Rangers as a kid. And this movie, Legend of the White Dragon, is kind of like an unofficial sequel, um, a more mature version of Power Rangers. So it's kind of like the boys meets Star Wars meets Power Rangers. Um, and it's just incredible. And, and fans themselves gave over half a million dollars saying that they wanted this movie. And, and that feels really special to get to be a part of something that people are so excited about that they would give their own money, their own time, yeah. their own energy into something. Um, and that is really cool. And, you know, I just, I've always just loved this concept of heroes. And for me, you know, films changed my life as a kid and, and still to this day. Yeah. And like I said, I'm constantly watching stories of how other people went through their hero's journey, how they went through the hardest of the hard and were able to come out the other end. Yeah. And, and so to get to play this hero character is just really powerful. And, you know, my mission is to really help other people learn how to be the hero of their life story oh, and cool. to realize that, you know, every single day we are all the actor, the writer, the director, the producer of our own life's movie. And, and you get to decide what kind of movie you're going to create, what kind of character you're going to play. Yeah. And a lot of times we get, we fall into playing characters in our own life's movie that maybe are the, the, the victim or maybe the villain. Yeah. And I just love to empower people to realize that you have a choice every day. Like, who are you playing today? And my hope is that we all choose to be the hero and to know that the hero is not somebody that has it easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like everything just comes easy to them. They are the ones that go through the bullshit. They are the ones that have things blowing up in their faces. They are the ones that people are after trying to kill them and things aren't going the way that they wanted them to. Yeah. But imagine if you were sitting in, a, you know, watching Batman or Superman or, or whatever film, you know, even uh, whatever film it is. Imagine if the hero character, if things were going wrong and everything's blowing up in his face, and he's like, oh, man, this is too hard. I just can't do it. I'm just going to go yeah. sit under a rock and cry and yeah. be done. Yeah. Like, you would walk out. It would be a crappy film. Yeah. And he would no longer be the hero, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so I think it's important to realize that, like, every day we have that that choice. And to see these different challenges that happen to us of, like, oh, this is just a scene in my movie. Yeah. This isn't forever. This is just a chapter. And it doesn't have to be the next chapter, but it's more about like, how am I going to handle this situation? What kind of character am I going to choose to play? And if I choose to be the hero, then I know I'm going to figure it out because yeah. heroes always do. They you know, always figure it out. You, yeah. And again, it's not going to go the way you think it's going to go, but you'll figure it out. And I think that identity, the who you believe that you are, is one of the most powerful things that all of us have. You know, if you can translate, if that can translate you being on film to somebody like me or whoever's watching you, mm -hmm. and that becomes a life lesson, good for you, man. You're like the mm -hmm. ultimate teacher in that scenario. I want to uh, introduce you to Charlie. He's my man in here with me uh, to make sure that this thing stays on, that we continue to talk. He's a big fan, and I'd like, he has a question for you, I think. Oh, awesome. Oh, it wasn't so much a question. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, I know Aaron. Is it Aaron that you're working with? Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Awesome guy. Awesome guy. He he is. And he's his story is so incredible. I watched him build his own brand uh, for so long. Uh, you know, Bat in the Sun, they have like 3 million subscribers um, now. And I watched him when he was just starting out, like just doing these little YouTube videos that everybody, you know, didn't really think were anything. And now he has this diehard following. People love his stuff. He's put so much so much into it when nobody believed in it. And now everybody believes in it because it's awesome. But yeah. he, and the story of him and his father, he was just a little kid that was just loved movies. And he went to his dad, like, dad, let's make movies together. And they started making movies together. And this dad supported this little kid's dream. And now years later, they work together and they're co-directing this movie and they co-direct kind of everything. And the dad does the, the music and all the movies. It's just such a powerful story of, of what, you know, just supporting kids and their dreams can, can result in. Yeah. I can't, I can't wait to see it. I just saw his, um, Batman dying is easy. Yes. Like yeah. It's really cool. Can't wait to see it.
Uh, let Thank me, you. Let me ask you this, uh, Rachel. When you're doing a film like this, this has the question is really, you know, what's next for you? What's next down the mm -hmm. road for you? But are you? Um, can you do that? Can you be looking ahead? Because I here's what I think works works for me, and doesn't work for me. Multitasking for me doesn't really work well. I mean, your body adapts to its environment and to what you're doing because that's what your body does. It adapts. Yeah. But yep. that doesn't necessarily mean it's the most efficient way to go about doing things, more than one thing is what I'm trying to say. So when you're in this movie like this, I mean, are you just in this moment now? Are you very focused on this one thing, which is a massive one thing? Mm -hmm. Or are, do you have like stuff that's out there kind of like you might be doing while you're doing this film? How does that work with you? Let's take a quick pause to tell you about something you are definitely going to want. Do you want a bone-crushing grip? Good, because you're gonna get one with the amazing new TRS Gripper. It's a progressive grip builder with longer handles and a special ergonomic design that's like a dozen hand grippers in one. Start off easy and work your way up to quickly build your grip strength from wet noodle to pulverizing. The package includes a video from the world-famous strength coach, Dr. Russ Horine, the man who worked with Leo Costa to help bring you Big Beyond Belief and the Bulgarian Power Burst. Dr. Horine shows you a simple and easy to follow workout plan that takes just minutes a day right from in front of your TV set if you want. So click on the link below and let's get started building you a stronger, firmer, bone crushing grip. Yeah, that's such a great question. And ultimately it varies, um, really depending on the project. So in some projects, you know, in the last film that I was in called The Method, uh, which also will come out soon, really awesome film. I was like the main, main girl. And it was really, I had so much in that movie where I was shooting every day, every day I had a ton of dialogue, every day I had really emotional scenes. In a film like that, you almost have to be completely all in. Yeah. Um, you know, and another film I have coming out called Alien Country. It's a really fun, like, action comedy movie um, that ultimately also, whenever I get on a movie, I'm always like, how can I help? How can I add value? I end up doing a lot of kind of in producing now as well because I love connecting people and I love making things happen. And I love, you know, just adding as much value as I possibly can. So ultimately on that film, I'm like, how can I help, you know, on a production side, um, making this as big and as, as great as possible. Um, and in that film, my character was a lot it wasn't as demanding. So I was able to do, you know, more things because it was just such like a fun, feel good comedy. Um, and it wasn't as challenging, so to speak of a role. Um, and, and same thing in this, like when I'm on set, I really, I, I block out my calendar. I'm like, I'm here today. Um, but there's days, you know, like there's several days where if I don't have to work for, you know, a couple of days because they're shooting other scenes that I'm not in, um, I need to do things that are fulfilling to me. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I will start to feel like, oh, it's I'm I, I'm losing that that passion, that growth. And so I think it's it's person to person. But I think it's ultimately how can you optimize for your yeah. skill set and your own strengths? Because also women and men are very different. Um, you know, men are much more wired to be single focused and women are much more wired to be hyper focused mm -hmm. um, just because of our the way we're wired, given that, like, from an evolutionary standpoint, women you know, had to, had to have like a baby on their hip and they had to be like scanning everything to feel if there are predators coming or they had to know which berries were poisonous and which ones weren't. And men were much more like, I just got to kill the deer. I got to kill the deer. I got to kill the deer and I got to bring food to my family. Yeah. So, you know, understanding what makes you great and then learning how to optimize for that is, is really important because everybody's just so different. Yeah. Um, and what might work for me might not work for you and what might work for you might not work for me. So yeah, I just think we're all so unique. Um, but I definitely had to learn to, um, because I am so like, I want to do so much, how to, there's days I need to block off my calendar and not do anything else but this. And yeah. there's other days where I can do a little bit more. You know, my, um, my makeup just by my own nature is I like having a lot of shit going on, you know, <laughs> yes, so me too. I, I just do, I can't, I, but here's what I've learned. And I actually learned this. I don't know if you know this, um, uh, nine years ago, I had three strokes in three weeks. It paralyzed me. That was oh my a, gosh! Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, that was a humongous wake up call. But here's what I learned: 
And I think this is uh, something that, you know, what we're talking about. There's, look, it's hard to change your, some personality traits that you have. You know, it's just, it's innate. And it's just hard for you to make these massive changes. I'm still that guy that likes to get involved in a lot of shit. I still do. But here's what I learned. And I learned this from my strokes. I compartmentalize now. And that's mm. different. There's a, it's a nuance, but it's different than having everything going on at the same time. I yeah. compartmentalize. I had to do that because I'm not that person that can live a flat life. And mm -hmm. so just because I had these strokes and just because I had that happen to me and I recovered 100%, um, I still had to be that person that had to live life emotionally. That's who mm -hmm. I am. And this is yeah. what I learned to just compartmentalize. When I get into something, I compartmentalize it for whatever length of time that is. I yeah. leave, I put it in a box and then I go to another box. But that box that I closed up does not interfere with this other box. That's the way that yeah. I've learned how to deal with my personality because otherwise I drive myself crazy. Yeah, that's a <laughs> skill. You know, I, I think it's so, you know, especially, you know, with everyone listening, you know, like when you say when you relate it to bodybuilding, it's a muscle yep. like to be able to uh, compartmentalize like that. It's, it's just like anything else. If you don't use it, you lose it. And yep. the more you use it, the easier it gets. It's just a muscle that has to like break down and get rebuilt <laughs> and get yeah. rebuilt and get stronger. And, stronger. and you know, and, and with the, uh, somebody who's had these, these problems, one of the problems is having a uh, high blood pressure. So in other words, I don't have it, but if you do have it and a lot of people do that can take you down. So can mm -hmm. what happened to you when your body starts being chronically overtrained and adrenal burnout. And yeah. so you're always going to have stress in your life throughout your life. But this, how, yep. again, I think we've talked about this on the show. It's, it really depends on how you learn how to handle these different situations. And that's, yeah. and you're right. It, it's not easy. It's, it's a mm -hmm. muscle that you have to develop because by nature, it's hard to let go of some of these things. You can't put it in yeah. a box. You keep looking back and you want to keep tearing into that box. And to yeah. walk away from that and to say, okay, I, uh, here's what I do. I make a little, uh, I make a, a promise to myself. I'm going to put this stupid stress in a box for 48 hours. I'm not going to deal with it. Okay. And I'm, I, I just have to hold myself accountable to that. You know, at first it's very difficult to do like anything else. Repetition is the mother of skill in our sport. Yep. And the more you do it, the more you learn how to deal with that. And even though it's uncomfortable and I keep looking at that damn box and I'm going to go kick its ass, I don't. Yes. I've learned yes. how to do that much better. I think, I think in some ways you're really talking about that. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And ultimately also boundaries, you know, like it, it was a lot for me to learn how to set boundaries for myself, yes. both with myself as well as with other people. And mm -hmm. before I learned how to do that, uh, my relationships and my health really suffered yeah. um, because I was trying to do so much and it ultimately resulted in me um, not being a good friend, not being a good girlfriend, not being, um, really good to myself. Yeah. And so learning how to, yeah, honor my energy, yes. set boundaries and be able to learn how to say no, um, so that I can, I can be the best me, um, was ultimately a, a really powerful life lesson and a, and a skill that I'm constantly practicing and working on. Um, and that I don't think ever ends, but we do get better and better at it. You know, I used to feel like I had to say yes to everything. Yeah. And it, it didn't end well. It doesn't end well that way. That but true. learning how to, you know, still support people and support projects with, but being able to say, like, I just don't have the energy to do that right now. Yeah. Um, and to honor that, I think is, is really powerful. And ultimately that's helped me be able to keep relationships that are really important to me um, because I'm, I'm communicating that like, Hey, I really support you. And I love you and I want to be there for you. I just don't have the energy right now yeah. to do that because I'm, I'm so full with other things, but I'm happy to help at a, at a later date or on future projects. Like always ask me, you know, things like that, learning how to communicate, you know, so much of our, our brand relationship renegades and our radio show that we have is about that, like how to create a really good relationship with yourself so that you're able to create really good relationships with other people because every relationship is just a direct reflection of your relationship with yourself. I like what you're saying, uh, you know, because what you're saying is basically you have to be good. With your, you have to take care of yourself without being, mm -hmm. uh, you know, narcissistic or, you know, I'm not talking about being over yes. top, but you you have to be good with you because, the, you know, if you're strong, this foundation of you is strong. Foundation of me is strong. It's much easier, mm -hmm. like you said, 
to be a better friend, to be a better everything. And yes, yes and if you're just not able to do that, you're just constantly being barraged. And again, you're you're yeah. becoming chronically overtrained as far as I'm concerned. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. Hey, listen, um, uh, as we're exiting out of this show, um, uh, anything else that we, you would like to mention or talk about in the things that you're doing? Oh, man. Um, you know, I just, I really just want to say thank you for having me on the show. Thank you for um, talking about this, for creating this platform that I know, you know, helps inspire and empower so many people for using your gifts and talents and strengths and everything you've been through to help support and empower so many people. Um, and, you know, ultimately, I, I just feel so grateful every single day to, like we talked about in the show, living out things that I visualized in my head <laughs> yeah. uh, for so long and will continue to do that. And, you know, with my future dreams and the things that we're doing um, to continue to, to live that and to look for the lesson and to disrupt the perception of, of suffering and pain and to move through it and to find the, the peace and the joy, even through the struggle and to really just get lost in the journey. You know, how can, how can we more celebrate each day, like the gift that is today and really realize that the tomorrow is not promised yeah. and the health that we have is just the greatest gift. And that's why I said to, to always come from the space of extreme gratitude. Um, I started something called hero habits, just like a free group that I have. Um, and just constantly talking about like hero habits and, I really believe that the I came up with this like five C's, which is like the five C hero habits. And it was just something, it was like a framing that could help me always choose to see if I was living in my hero character or not. <laughs> and yeah. so these five C's meaning curiosity. So getting super curious about why things are going the way they're going, like why your life looks the way it looks and why you feel the way you feel really getting curious and then really getting creative using your creative power that we all have this creative power. It's one of the best superpowers that we all have. And sometimes I think it gets beaten out of us as kids, but ultimately the creative power to start choosing different, to start creating different things, to, to solve problems and creative solutions, you know, and then to get really compassionate, compassion, 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 compassion for self, compassion for others. I think one of the greatest hero habits ever is the ability to have compassion that we're going to mess up. Other people are going to mess up. Things aren't going to go the way we want them to go. And that's just part of the human experience. And when we can have that extreme compassion, then it allows forgiveness. It allows connection. It allows us to move forward and move forward into more courage. You know, the courage to just do the brave thing that when you feel fear, be brave, <laughs> you know, that every time you're brave, I just really believe that we win. Um, and that, sometimes courage comes in so many different ways. The courage to make the phone call that you're scared to make to the courage to have the hard conversation that you're scared to have the courage to get up and go to the gym, yeah. <laughs> the courage to, you know, to, to cry, to feel your emotions. And then ultimately to move into connection, this, this connection to self and to others and to the world around us that ultimately we're human beings and we're wired for connection. And so many times we want to isolate and, when we do that, we are limiting our power. You know, we're, we're more powerful together. We're stronger together. Um, and so I feel like those five C's, curiosity, creativity, compassion, courage, and connection ultimately really help us live in, in that state of being a hero, not only for ourselves, but also for others. I think you're right. And I also think, and I said it before early on in the show, I think you're a very enlightened person. You've got a great spirit mm -hmm. around you. <laughs> Uh, and you're a great role model, and I appreciate you coming on. I'm sure that our viewers uh, learned a lot from you today. Uh, I wish yeah. you, I wish you well. Um, Thank you. Anytime you want to come back on and chat with us, uh, please reach out. Absolutely, I would absolutely love that. And for anybody listening, you know, would love to. We have our radio show, Relationship Renegades. We should absolutely talk about you coming on there as well. That would be really fun. Nice. All right, Rachel. Thanks for coming cool. on. Thank you. See ya. Ciao. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Serious Growth Podcast. For more episodes like the one you just listened to, subscribe to us on your mobile podcast app and leave us a review. If you'd like to reach out, you can find us online at SeriousGrowth.com. Until next time, train smart and train hard.